Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Afternoon Tea with Helen. And as always, I have my cup of tea here in my beautiful English teacup. And today, I'd like you to subscribe, I'd like you to comment, and I'd like you to like and share before we go any further. But today, I have another English woman that is going to be talking to us, and this is Sarah Wake Davis. And I've known Sarah for a few years now, very interesting person, it has a lot of things that she does. So she's going to explain to us what she does, how she does it, and how she manages to stay so full of energy. So Sarah, welcome to the show. How are you, and what are you up to these days? Well, thanks, Helen. Um, I'm amazing. And I do have, I have to say, I'm not a terribly good British lady because I'm not a big tea drinker. I'm not a big oh, tea no. drinker. I, no. But I did put it in my um, Royal Worcester cup and saucer. Um, but it I is love it. It is. Oh, right. Okay. Right, right, right. I think mine's Dalton or Dalton oh, if you're Mrs. Dalton. DK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we love a bit of a fruit. Exactly. That's a British comedy show. Yes. Okay. So, so Sarah, what do you do? What do you do for a living? What do you do to entertain yourself? What's going on in your life? Oh, well, what do I do for a living? For a living, I, these days, for the last five years, I have a home staging and redesign business. So I'm a home stager and redesigner. For fun, I still dance. I was a dancer in um, a previous life. Um, I worked all around the world dancing and um, it, it is who I am. So I still offer that. Um, I teach a dance fitness program, so I do that. Um, but yeah, these days, business-wise, I am staging homes to sell. What, what, what is staging? All right, because you said you're a dancer and now you're a stager. So you're on stage. What does stage mean? For those exactly. people that don't know what a stager is. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So staging, home staging is preparing properties for sale. So I help um, homeowners and realtors prepare properties. Staging is not decorating. We must say that up front. Staging is not decorating because we're not decorating. We're not, we, we don't actually take the homeowner's tastes into, uh, into, into consideration at all. Staging is marketing. It's right. fundamentally a marketing tool to make the house um, sellable. So it's taking um, each room in the home and making it appeal to the most potential buyers because that's what you want. You want to get traction to the home and you want, you want a bidding war, don't you, at the end of the day. You want people to want your right, properties exactly. so that they will make offers and the more people doing that, the more money you're going to make. So I'm part of a selling team. Yeah, because when you go up, go yeah, because usually when you go to a house, one of the things you look at is the the furniture, the paintings, the lamps, all that sort of thing. And that can have an impact immediately on whether you like the space. Because I know when I when I go to look at places, I try to ignore the furniture and look at the walls and look at the doors and things like that that are structural. But it's difficult. So staging is very important because people tend to look at the furniture and everything. Yeah, it's really, it's really important when you're selling your property, you have to detach yourself from your home, which is a really hard thing to do. When you have lived in your home for three, four, five years, 20 years, oh my gosh, what, what memories and everything that you have there, right? It's truly personal. Selling your nice. home is one of the biggest things you can do in your life. It, it's one of the top three things that causes the most stress, right, in your life. So my, yeah. my job is to actually take away that anxiety and that stress and that overwhelm, give you um, processes and procedures. If you're living in your home when you're selling it, that's really hard to do because we don't live in staged homes. We like to, <laughs> but we really, really. Right, exactly. Yes. So right. my job right. is, to, right. is to create an atmosphere, really tell the story of the home. 
you just said it that when you go in you look at the lamps and you look at the furniture well if that's what's happening when the sellers are coming into the home we've missed the point because when you're selling your home right. you're selling the structure you're not selling your couch you're not selling the artwork right we're selling exactly. the features it could be the the fireplace the vaulted ceiling the view whatever is the the attraction my job is to understand the demographic of the buyer coming in so that I can and merchandise your home to then tell the story of the house so when that potential buyer walks through the door they go oh babe I could live here right because yeah. people don't buy houses they buy homes right and so exactly. they don't want to walk in and see you living there they want to walk in and see themselves living there right so it's really, so I, I, think, I like to say, that that say slash therapist because when right. the seller is selling their home, it's really a delicate dance that I do when I speak to the seller. Because for, for me, the stranger, to come in and say, oh, this paint color is lovely, but we're going to need to change it. That this, right. uh, you know, what, whatever it may be, anything that I am asking you to do is it can be received as a real insult so you have to really handle right. the care of those yeah. emotions right right of course of course so how how did you get into staging what made you decide to go into people's homes and rearrange them right so i i believe that had i not been a professional dancer i would have been a designer or something to do with homes I actually, I think, did my first staging when I was seven. Um, I'm an only wow. child and my parents, I don't know, I was in my room playing by myself and um, I guess I decided I just needed to rearrange my room and I moved. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know how I did this, but I guess I was a Wonder Woman, a Superwoman from the, an early age, but I actually moved my wardrobe Granted, it was a kiddie wardrobe, but I moved my wardrobe and my bed and my right. chest of bed. Um, yeah, so I've been staging for, for probably all my life. And I was helping all of my family and friends decorate and design all, all my life. However, when I, I got to that sort of big birthday <laughs> a couple of years ago and, mm -hmm. you know, decided... Um, I wanted to take my creativity in a different direction. I had been uh, in entertainment for over 30 years and I'd been on the stage, <laughs> spent a lot of time, many years on the stage. Wow. And then I became a director and a producer. And uh, producing is like, you know, pushing a boulder uphill. It's, uh, it can be somewhat thankless and not terribly creative. And it became dealing with other people's um, ego and, um, I was like, oh, I, I, need a, I, need to, I need some creativity myself. I, I want to do something different. And this opportunity came up. And so I took um, a, a course. I, I became certified. I got certified in, um, in staging. And I do continuing education. I'm always, um, you know, I'm, this whole time right here in 2020 this pandemic i've i've done a lot more education as well um to keep myself current um in design as well as in uh, real estate yeah. and i i have i actually have a very outgoing personality i am quite you know fun um and i like people a lot so all those things combined um yeah made it an uh, an easier transition for me to find my next career so you said you've been on stage dancing and you were dancing all over the world. What sort of dancing were you doing and how did you manage to do it all over the world? Oh yeah, so I, I was blessed. I, um, I've been dancing since I was three years old. Um, yeah, and um, I actually started my career as a bluebell in Paris. Um, I was a showgirl in Paris, um, and I auditioned for many different choreographers, producers, directors, and um, I, I have always loved traveling. 
always loved traveling and I started my traveling at um, 18 years old. It was my birthday in July and in September I was on my first aeroplane traveling to uh, Japan actually was my first ever wow. uh, gig. And so yeah, I did that for um, 12 years, uh, 13 years performing, 13 years performing. Wow. Wow. And, and that's why I ended so, up here in America. So what what would you say to someone? You, you've you been dancing since you were three. You did your first gig traveling around when you were 18, which is pretty young to be traveling the world by yourself, even in current times, 2020. So what would you say to someone that, you know, wants to get into dancing or into acting or any of those things that you were saying about what what would be something that you would want them to know that if you'd known you might have done something differently i think it's uh, training you have to have training you have to have that discipline and i think that your education gives you that discipline you um as a i think that dancing or the arts in general but i will speak to my my dancing it was such a valuable life tool it it gave me um self-discipline it taught me um leadership skills it taught me how to be a team player um it taught me that the show must always go on <laughs> that so mm -hmm. i think that um being being having had dance in my life having that training was the best thing that it could have i could have ever done it gave me confidence it gave me the confidence to be able to leave home at 18 years old and and really never look back um so i've been very what about what about the, what about these people that um um are doing you know the TikTok and they're doing their instagram you know stories and they're they're doing their um all these different competitions that go around and they don't have training, but they do have a voice or a dance or something that is pretty good. Because the one thing you said was education and discipline. So what about these natural born artists? Oh, there is room Do they still need to go into training? No, well, right. I think that, I, you know what? I think for myself, it was important for me that, I'm loving it, watching all of these TikTok um, videos. The creativity, uh -huh. the creativity of people is immense. Um, I'm in awe of that. Yeah. It, it's that to me is is sort of like reality television, right? There is there is a lane for everybody. I think that one is right. not better than the other. It just gives there's just different opportunity, and and so it's. Right. We, we need that, um, can I say, off the cuff kind of raw talent. We need that. Um, for me, mm -hmm. education was important. I, I, there are dancers that were way better than I, way more gifted. I, I say, you know, God-given talent. I have some talent, but I needed my training to support it, to help me grow, to get better. Right. But if you, you know, some of people are so talented and so creative, it, it puts, yeah, I'm in awe of that. And you watch, so yeah. you think you can dance and the tricks that people do. Right. But, but I think what's yeah. important to know is that when you have training, it gives you a foundation. And especially in dance, right. you have to have the right foundation in which to grow so that you have longevity, especially in, in dance. Right. And as a performer of, in dance, you're, you're, it's like an athlete. You don't have, it isn't, it isn't forever, right? Unfortunately, right. we can stay fit and we can stay healthy but there is at some point you know your body doesn't do for you what it used to do i teach my dance right. fitness class in my mind helen i am still 25 and i am oh, yes yeah. but i can't do what my body did at 25 and sometimes i forget and i and then for the next week and a half yeah. i'm like you know rubbing myself with liniment yeah. and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know so, yeah. 
I know that I know that feeling, believe me, you know, because I was a dancer <laughs> as well. And uh, in my younger day, and it was so funny, yesterday, um, uh, my husband, Phil, as you know, um, his, one of his, he was playing his um, uh, music in the other room. And uh, he said, oh, my favorite songs, come on, you've got to dance. You know? So I got up and I went to dance with him and we're doing the dancing. I'm going, yeah, I'm out of breath already. <laughs> it was like two minutes. It was like, are you I know, this is that's, ridiculous. You know? That's the tragedy. It takes a long time to get your stamina and it takes 3.2 seconds for it to disappear. Exactly. I know, I know. And you've got to keep it up. You have to keep it up. There's a guy that we see uh, when we go to the Broadwalk, and he's ex-army, and he runs the length of the Broadwalk, which is about four or five miles, on the sand, full kit, every single day. And my husband went up to him one morning and said, why do you do it? You served, you, you, you're not in there anymore. What he said, it's become part of me. He said, I have to keep doing it to keep my fitness levels up. You know, yeah. and it's true. You got to keep your fitness levels up, otherwise, you you know, you, you like. And, but I also, it. and I also so, think um, that exercise is is also a mental thing. It it is a uh, it yeah. it frees you. It, it's a moment to just free your mind of all the clutter that's in there. I think that right. you know there is a time where you exercise because you want to be thin and gorgeous right but then i think there's also comes a point where you're exercising for your strength for your strength of you know right. just your muscles to be able to yeah. get that box off the top shelf yeah. but and your bones yeah exactly. for your, and for your mind and your your emotional well-being i think yeah. and and for me dance is what does it i i couldn't not have dance in my life and so i teach a bit a, a dance fitness class called Be Moved. And um, it's a beautiful, a beautiful uh, program that I love to teach um, I, because I get, I get to actually do it. <laughs> I get to do it and, it, and it, right. it's the mind, the body and the soul. It's amazing. <clears throat> and you're doing that on Zoom now? I am, I am. You're teaching I, a class on Zoom? Excellent. I miss, I miss my in-person classes. It, it is not, the same however my my ladies that i teach they wanted it uh, we did i did my first virtual class several weeks ago now probably two months ago in truth and i was like oh i'm not sure this is this is oh, it's weird right because i'm only seeing myself right yeah. well i'm seeing you on the other side but you're in little boxes and, right and i'm in my Kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> I have a little space in my kitchen. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm dancing. But what I realize is that it's still so important to share it, and that the the ladies who right. come every week, I teach it twice a week. Uh, the, the ladies that come, it's it's a release for them. It's a moment for us all to still be together. Um, that connection, right. um, that spirit, that energy that we uh, generate, and um, yeah, it's it's it's. There's a place for it. And I think even as we move forward and we, we, life comes back to being in person and I will be able to go back and do the in-person classes. I know for myself, there is room for this virtual, um, platform ongoing, Absolutely. ongoing yeah. as, as another, as yeah. another lane to be in. Right. I've, I've got another string right. to my bow and my, I travel yeah. myself still, my husband works away and so i go to visit him and and i used to have to stop my classes right but now oh there's that opportunity and i was able exactly. to, to take yep. my staging business online and i'm doing virtual consultations so right. there is a, there is a way to actually keep my business going whilst i'm physically someplace else which is actually amazing and so the silver lining here is that this this as much as the, the pandemic has has stopped life as we knew it i believe that we're we're able to pivot it's important that you can pivot and and, and move on um and i've been able to do that and to create then new new ways to do my business whether it's my dance or whether it's my my staging business um and and the virtual and then, uh, exactly. world is amazing and I love that. 
And I love that you're saying all of that because when I'm talking to my clients, that's exactly what I'm saying to them. This is, this is going to be around a lot longer and I think people are going to be doing business virtually a lot more. And there's lots and lots of businesses that didn't think they could be virtual and they are because of what's happened. And then they realize, wow, this is okay. We can do this, you know, and, and moving forward, that's exactly what's going to happen. So Sarah, I want to thank you so much for sharing your enthusiasm, your energy and everything with us this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world and what time you're watching this. Um, and it's so great to see your smiling face as always. Um, down below, we're going to have your link for your Zoom class and for your, uh, your staging as well so that people can see what's going on and look at your website and all that sort of stuff. And you never know, they might join your, your dance class. I might do it as well. Amazing. And um, because being at home, yeah, well, being, being around uh, doing um, a lot of things on Zoom frees up a few more hours in the day because you're not traveling. Yes. So there are other things that you can fit in. Like you said, you've been learning things. So have I. I've taken classes on a few different things that I always wanted to do and never had time for. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a great thing to do. So I want to thank you and I want to thank everyone for watching also another episode of Afternoon Tea with Helen. Uh, the link is below if you know someone that would like to be interviewed or if you'd like to be interviewed yourself, then please let me know. Subscribe, share and comment would be amazing. Thanks again and keep drinking your tea, keep chatting, all those other things that people do. Goodbye for now. <laughs>